right, we're in, we're in 1 Peter talking about faith this morning. So many, so much ramifications of faith. Uh, our faith has to do with everything. It has to do with our uh, respect for God. And uh, when you get, when you start, uh, we get, we start walking away from God. Uh, we, uh, we get out of fellowship with God. It's because of faith. We don't believe the Lord's going to deal with us. <laughs> you know, but he will. And we don't believe we're going to lose our peace, but we do. So faith is, is uh, it's not just salvation. It affects everything in our life. So uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number uh, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, not by you, but for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto the salvation of ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, many different uh, types of temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold uh, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, in, whom having not seen ye love, and whom now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Heavenly Father, bless your word, we pray. Help your people and help those that are watching, Lord, a, a few on YouTube and a few, Lord, uh, in the house of God, uh, Lord, that are, that are uh, here and then some watching at home. We just pray you'd honor your word and give us, give us a bigger audience. Give us more people in the house of God. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. The significance of faith. Yeah, if, if you get what he's saying here, he's comparing gold. Uh, to get pure gold, you would, you would uh, heat it up, and the dross, you'd melt it down. The dross comes to the top. They would scoop that off and, uh, and keep repeating that process, and you would have pure gold. That's, a, that's what happens with us. When our faith is tried, the dross comes to the top. The stuff that, that, that is not of faith is, is drawn off. And over a period of time, if we, if we follow God in the right way, then what, what is left is like pure gold. It's of much more value. It's precious. And that word means of great, uh, of great value. So the significance of our faith the significance of our faith. When Peter wrote this letter, the world was changing. Uh, it's the beginning of the first century church. The government re remained uh, unconcerned about this new religious sect. As the church grew, the constrictions of the government increased, sort of like what we, we have sometime today. Peter is writing to a people who are finding it increasing, increasingly difficult to live the life of faith. And you know, we, we have battles. I, I, I had some negative uh, people uh, yesterday. I was sitting outside of one of the coffee shops. Uh, we're allowed to do that. I checked with the governor. By the way, the governor's coming up. He's bringing apples for everybody. And I thought, that's a pretty nice touch. Appreciate him doing that. But... Um, uh, yeah, and then I got some positive people. They were so excited. They saw my truck. They saw the sign, and they said, oh, that's great. That's great, and I uh, got to uh, get the witness and encourage some people, and now when, if they're saved, I try to 
encourage them to be a witness and get the, 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 uh, get the word out. I don't want a church full of people that don't witness. You know what I'm saying? We don't need a church full of Gavins. <laughs> we need... We need... Uh, hey, brother, everybody turn around and look at Gavin way back. Ain't he pretty? That's my buddy there. So, uh, yeah, I try to encourage people to, to be a witness and, and to uh, tell people about Jesus that are already saved. Timeless faith. We have a timeless faith. Uh, everyone has faith. It's a matter of what you put that faith in. You know where I'm going with this, Tom? You've heard the analogy of a chair. Well, and, and I guess you could say I lost my faith. In a chair, I happen to sit in. Whether in the body or out, I know not. But uh, Thursday night. But I will be bringing my own chair, one that I have faith in. But, you know, we, everybody has faith. The atheist has faith in their uh, rational reasoning, ha has removed the possibility of God. His faith is in his intellectual ability, Nothing more ag arrogant than that. You, there's people that you may know more than, but there's a lot of people that know a lot more than you, and collectively, <laughs> we know a lot more than, uh, than the atheist does. And God knows more, and uh, if you want to mock somebody that is not as educated or doesn't know as much as you, uh, think about what God knows that you don't know. So... Uh, so his faith is in his intellectual ability. I don't know of anything more arrogant or anything more startling is when you leave this world, you're going to face judgment if you don't know Christ. So uh, others have faith in their abilities, their skills, uh, their connections, uh, their family, their friends, and themselves. Everyone has faith. The question is, where is your faith anchored? What is your faith connected to? And uh, we need an anchor of the soul, amen, because even with the atheists, sooner or later the storms are going to come. You know, the, the uh, parable of the man that built his house upon the sand looked as good as the other one. And uh, then the other guy built his house upon the rock. The winds came, the floods came, the tsunami came. And the rain and the hell came and uh, it destroyed that house, not because it wasn't a nice house, it just wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't on a good foundation. And so it did not stand the test of the storm. Faith stands the test of the storm. You could look at death as a storm. We are, we are <clears throat> I, 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 the only analogy that comes to my mind, I'm mortified of heights. And I'm mortified of getting on carnival rides, uh, uh, roller coaster. And uh, I, the last time I got on one is I wanted to prove how tough I was with my son. Josh was a kid. I said, I can do it. And I held on. And I was so exhausted from tightening my muscles when I got off that roller coaster. And I can hear, still hear that click. Click, click, I knew what was coming next. <laughs> click, 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 and you... Shh. And uh, anyway, it, I didn't like that. So uh, we, we, we look at death, I think, that way. And I'm, I'm not looking forward to death, but I'm absolutely looking forward to the other side. Amen. I've been around the block a couple times, and I've seen about everything. And the only thing that... Uh, the only thing that has any importance to me is laying up treasures in heaven and making sure I'm saved, did that 40 years ago, and getting ready to go over there. This is going to be, never had a trip like that. Can you imagine being quarantined for all this time and then going to heaven? You want to go, I wanted to go somewhere so bad, I went outside the truck stop and parked. I wasn't the only one there. Got my coffee at the fast food and sat out there and pretended like it could go in a place. And, and oh, by the way, we're going we're gonna to do a little fellowship time here at the church. Anybody wants to come, give me a call, and we're going to have coffee in here, maybe some uh, donuts or cookies or something. And anybody wants, we're going to have separate tables. 
One table's going to have a tag on it that says politics. <laughs> the other table's going to have a tag that says conspiracy theories. <laughs> another table's going to have a tag that says chit chat. And then maybe another one, Bible talk. I don't know, but we're just going to, anybody wants to get out of the house, I look for places to go. So anybody wants to get out of the house and come over here, we'll, we'll do a little fellowship. And I've talked to some folks and they said, sounds like a good idea. I know Fritz does. And we're going to get Fritz to come sit right over here. And uh, usually on Sunday morning. And, and so he loves the coffee shop. So I'm going to get him and his friends. He's got a couple guys that come hang out with him. We're going to come over here. We're going to Jesus find them if we can. Get them Jesus fine. So uh, what? Uh, I don't know when. I said, give me a call. Give me a call, and we'll set up a time if you want to come over. We're not going to set a time yet to find out when people can come, but it'll be, it'll be something to do uh, while we're uh, quarantined, and, and uh, if the uh, governor drops off those apples for us, we'll have those to enjoy. He's supposed to bring them to the church. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, we look at faith. <clears throat> Look at the faith of, a, uh, of, a, of an atheist. And I've talked to several atheists. And I, 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 and I, the last one I talked to was a couple weeks ago. I said, here's what I don't understand about atheists. If you don't believe in God, if I didn't believe in God, I'd be joking about it. I'd be, it would, there's nothing you could say that would bother me. It'd be You'd be talking about Santa Claus or the bunny rabbit and trying to convince me. I would just laugh it off. I mean, it'd be funny. Why the atheists, why are they so angry? Everyone I've met, and if I push them, and Lord, I'd love to do that, <laughs> if I needle them and push them, they go from this eloquent uh, uh, intellectual conversation to, uh, to, uh, uh, to a 10-year-old redneck and start cussing me out every single time. And it's beautiful. I love it. But uh, they hate God. It's not that they don't believe in God. It's they hate God. And so you find that I don't care how educated he, he is, I'll get him in five minutes to lose his cool, and he'll be talking like a, like a southern person. <laughs> so timeless faith. Faith in Christ is imperishable, he says. It, it's imperishable. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't go bad. You know, some things you've got to, uh, uh, you got to not, I told my wife we left a case of eggs in the car, but it was pretty cold. I said, I think they'll be okay. And they were, because uh, it was pretty cold, almost froze. And you worry about things that are left out. I worry about it more than Kathy, not so much. But, uh, Things that are left out, I wonder if it went to the bad. Your faith will not go to the bad. It won't ever go to the bad because where is it at? It's reserved in heaven for you, not by you. And so your faith is not going anywhere. You can make it rough on yourself, but you can never get unfaithed, Amen. uncoupled, lost again. Because it's a transaction that's already taken place. It's not in the process of taking place. Uh, and so uh, faith, is, uh, faith is timeless. It's imperishable. Uh, it, that's why we're laying up treasures in heaven. It, I know. I, I am really, I don't know, maybe I'm twisted. Uh, but in my thinking, do the, all these years of the influence of religion... I may be just pie in the sky uh, crazy, but I, I, it's like I remember when I was back in before I got married, I used to do something called saving money. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have heard of that, but I saved money. I worked a job. I sponged off my mom and I put my entire check in the bank and I bought a 67 uh, Firebird, and on the hood of that had those little spoilers on the front, and it had H O. Have no idea what it meant, but it looked so cool. And I bought that, and I paid cash for that because I was able to save money. And I love, 
I have a little bank book, and I love getting that thing of how much have I got. Woo, $4,000. Worked two years, already got $4,000. $6 an hour, big time. And that's how I feel about laying up treasures in heaven. When I witnessed to people years ago, I used to feel like, I got to do this. It's kind of a drudgery because I'm making myself vulnerable. They're going to laugh at me. I'm going to have to knock somebody out. But I haven't had to do that. And it's like, I just laid up a treasure in heaven. And I talk to somebody and I get to give, give them the gospel. And I'm thinking, I just laid up a treasure in heaven. Right. When you help somebody, you know what? It just hit me this morning. I don't know what triggered it. But Jesus, I was preaching about the other day. Jesus said, when you do this for the least of these, my disciples, a homeless person that's a Christian, you help them, it's the same as if you help uh, a, a, a millionaire. It's the same as if you help a preacher or somebody that uh, maybe is esteemed in the church or a deacon or Sunday school teacher. You, you help someone you just laid up treasure in heaven. He said to give a cup of cold water the name of the disciple, you get a reward. All of you that have brought me coffee, nice cup of coffee. Tom's dad, Greg, is a gracious, nothing like Tom, gracious, gracious person. And he always brings my coffee, and when my chair split in half and I sat on the floor, do you know, I, I, I want to insert this here. It's not really spiritual, but... I did that once around the room, look. You know, you look to see how embarrassing, you, how embarrassed you should be. And I looked at my wife, and, and uh, Starla was sitting here. She laughed the loudest. She's going to pay for that. I looked around the room, and I looked on the couch, and I saw Shelly. And Shelly's face said, knew that was going to happen. It's like she set me up. She wasn't surprised like everybody else. She was like this. Been waiting on that. Been waiting on that. Anyway, where was I? So that's why you don't get distracted with stupid stories. So <clears throat> our faith will not perish. Everything else will. Uh, Fritz uh, gave me a list. I've got to get that done. He gave me a list of uh, questions. I can't read some of them about what heaven's going to be like and what age we will be in heaven. And, you know, that's going to be so cool, so gravy when we get there and people that, you know, uh, my mom, my dad, uh, my dad's not going to have an alcohol problem when he gets to heaven. Amen. Maybe one beer, something like that a week just to settle his nerves, but not a, not a serious, serious alcohol problem. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be clean and sober for eternity. Amen. And I'll get to know who he really was. And my mom. And we're going to be the same age. That's going to be freaky, isn't it? <laughs> to be the same. Can you imagine being the same age as your mom? You'd be like looking in a mirror, Emily. She's just like you. And, and can you imagine? Heaven's going to be like that. And uh, some people, maybe they're going to be surprised when they get there. I didn't know it was streets of gold. <laughs> Walls of Jasper, I had no idea. Our faith is uncorrupted. Uh, you've, heard the, you've heard the saying, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And it, it is talking about our sinful natures and leaders who start out as good, caring people. They get a little bit of power pride and ego and uh, all that goes away and it's me and mine and how much can I accumulate and, uh, it, and it's a sad thing but Christ has no sin and our faith is in the power of God God has absolute power he has no pride he has no ego and uh, in the scope of eternity He's going to be there as he was in eternity past, as he was on this earth uh, for 30-some, 30 33 years. He will be in heaven. He's not changed. I am the Lord. I change not. Our faith in Christ is unfading. The Bible says it fadeth 
not away. It's incorruptible, verse 4, and it's undefiled, and it fadeth not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. So we look at our, we look at our faith. It's not going to fade. Jesus is, I, I, I tell people this story. It really happened. I met with a lady here uh, uh, maybe, maybe two years ago, and she wanted to know about the church, and she didn't talk a lot, and I was in kind of deep thought. And uh, she didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I started looking off. We were sitting outside one of the coffee shops. Started looking off in the distance. I forgot she was at the table. I totally forgot. She, she kind of faded away. And so I turned around. I said, I should probably read my Bible. And I looked up and I said, you're still here. <laughs> totally. I mean, it was the craziest thing that I did that. But, <laughs> but you got to talk a little bit or, or you disappear. She faded away. We... Salvation doesn't fade. Faith doesn't fade. Matter of fact, it should get more clear. And the longer you've been saved, it should get more real, the faith that we have. It's a part of our character. It's a part of our life. Everything is viewed through the eye of faith. When we have plans for the future, it has to do with faith. Can God do it? Will God do it? Yes, he will. I believe God. You can't. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've got to have faith in God to please Him. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever's hindering you, whatever you've got to overcome, God will get you through it. And I encourage you uh, to have the faith to get a, get a composition book and write down things you want God to do. People talk about their five-year plan. I don't really have a certain... I like day-to-day -day stuff. I like to fly by the seat of my pants. I don't like a whole lot of structure. I hate organization. I just do enough to get by. I know I have to do some and the rest of it. I like life to come at me and I don't know what's going to happen. I love it that way. So that's just me. Not a good way to live, but that's me. So it doesn't fade. I've been saved 40 years. My faith has not faded. I remember initially hearing the Word of God, hearing sermons and saying, boy, I hope that's so. I hope that works. And now I'm preaching telling you, yes, yeah, it works. It's real. It works. You're going to fall. You're going to fade. God will never fade away uh, in, in, in His faith. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we, we should have faith. Faith is tested. The timeless nature of faith. It is tested. Uh, you are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Your salvation faith is going to be revealed in heaven. Everybody's is. But your works faith, which is an extension of that, that you allow it to grow, you fertilize it, you water it, you take care of it, and then it naturally grows, or you ignore it, and it's still there, but it dries up a little bit. Your faith is going to be put on display. Uh, there's no ordinary faith. There's tested faith. Uh, and people, countless people, have put their faith in God. Do you know there are a millions and millions of people that overcame more than you have or you need to to walk with God, to be saved, and to walk with God? Do you know you got a relative? I, that occurred to me a while back. You got a relative somewhere whose personality, if if he if if his friends <laughs> could be brought back in a time machine today and met you, they'd say, "Oh, there's there's George, there's Henry, there's Lucy, just exactly like them." Relatives years and years ago that are a lot like you that God gave the power of faith to overcome in their life. And God says, here's another one. He's done this before. I go to a doctor, and one of the things I want to know is, have you done this before? Have you done this surgery, or do I need to put it off and let you practice? And I ask other people, I don't ask the doctor, I don't trust them. But I ask other people, I said, you know this doctor? Oh, yeah, he's good. He's good. You can trust him. Well, Jesus is that way. 
and he will get you through. He will get you to heaven. And I've started to say, like that roller coaster ride I was talking about, you're going to get to heaven, and you're going to be holding on so hard, and, uh, and it's going to be over like that. You're going to be with, with, uh, with Jesus. So we see the timeless nature of, 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 uh, and the testing of faith. That's what this stuff is not. A, this is not something I got to get through to live my life. It's something that's necessary because, listen, I've been preaching a lot of you guys for years. You're full of draws. You're just full of draws. Especially Sherry. She's laughing it off, but she. <laughs> we're all full of draws. And we think we're not till we have a building program. And we find out how unspiritual we are. That's what preachers tell me. We're full of draws. And God lets the heat turn up, and it's not fun. And then God starts sifting it off. And guess what? And he, here's what I find myself preaching to people. What do I get out of it? You know, the disciples asked that. What, how's this going to benefit me? Because you're going to have a better life, an easier life. Because you, got, you don't have that stupid dross in there messing up your goal. You're going to be more effective. You're going to have better worship. You're going to be happier. You're going to be a new and improved you. It's valuable. And the idea here is that he's talking about getting rid of that dross. The goldsmith would continue this process of getting the dross, getting the junk out of the gold until it became uh, heating it up, till it became liquid, the impurities would come to the surface, and he'd get rid of that stuff, and the goal was to be able to see his reflection. Oh, isn't that good? We want to have the reflection of Christ. It's going to be better <laughs> for you in this life, because once you get in, you can't get out. You can't go AWOL like you can in the military. I had a guy borrow $40 for me, and then he went AWOL. A -A -wall. <laughs> that too. He went, he went AWOL and borrowed. I know what he looks like. I could pick him out in the lineup. I don't know how, how he looks now, but years ago, I remember that smiling face because I had, I had, we had pictures in basic training, and he went AWOL. You can't go AWOL from God. So you might as well just stick it out, quit fighting him, and give in. Because you're going to be a lot happier if you live for God after you're saved like you should. And rather than go to heaven, go to heaven striving and trying to live for God, than going to heaven like some of y'all are right now. <laughs> Carnal, wicked, evil, full of anger, almost asleep, yawning. You don't want to go to heaven like that. You don't want to get to heaven and say, what's up, Jesus? You're up. <laughs> and you're gonna, you, you don't want to deal with that. So get it right now. It's important. It's precious. That purification process is precious. Nothing purifies you like fasting. In, in, and people tell me they fast and they just feel so close to God. I know they're not fasting, right? When you fast, all that anger, all that stuff that bothers you comes out. That's what happens when you fast. You're angry. Sure you are. And, and that, all that stuff, then you get it out. You're so embarrassed. And then you're, then you're okay. It is revealing. The goldsmith knew that, that he has pure gold when he can see that reflection. And we know that we're right when we can see that reflection of God in our life. Don't give up. It struggles. It's ups. It's downs. Our faith begins to reflect the deeper knowledge of Jesus. Our lives will begin to change when you and I live differently. I, I, I find myself, you know, uh, the, the song says prone to wander. Prone to leave the God I love. We, we, we live by faith and then we get weak. We get, I got to go back to that safe 
feeling of carnality. You know, something just comfortable about that. There's just something comfortable about that. Amen? Amen. But when our faith begins to reflect that deeper knowledge of Jesus, you fall in love with Jesus. That's what the church needs. We don't need to be chewed out. We don't need to be ripped up and plowed and all. We need, we need to fall in love with Jesus. And you can feel that way about him. And you can actually get a sense of what, uh, what is going on in your life. Our faith is centered in our love for Jesus. The essence of faith that is that it does not require our sight or proof. Faith is reality. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't have to see somebody to know them. I'm an I, 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 old uh, rock singer. I say, oh, it doesn't feel old. James Taylor. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Huh? In my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Come on, guys. Can't you just see the moonshine? Ain't it just like a friend of mine hid me from behind? Yes, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. Now, I love that stuff. I grew up with that, and I'm like, all my memories were attached to James Taylor's music, everything. I mean, really, it's just like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then I got to see him. I was working at the hotel. He was staying there. I was starstruck. I never thought I'd be the starstruck guy. Like Brother Gay is with, what's her name? Help me. Come on. Janis Joplin. He's Janis Joplin. Him and Janis Joplin dated for four years. I'm serious. I was joking with him one time. He said, oh, yeah, I love Janis Joplin. I'm like, what? <laughs> they got her. Never mind. Al Barn. Al Barn joke. But, uh, but I saw him, and it's like, that's him. He wasn't who I had in my mind. But he's got a poetic voice, poetic music. He didn't even write the, good, the best songs. He didn't write. But... Man, he could convey that. And when I saw him, he didn't know me from Adam, but oh, I knew him. I had this illusion in my mind of who this guy was. And when I saw him, it was just amazing. And then we got, we got concert tickets. Only concert I guess I've ever been to in the gourd. Me and Kathy and Paul and Stephanie got set on the front row where he was at. And me and Kathy went and heard him. And I'm thinking... Wow, this, this is amazing. We need, to have, we need to have that kind of a starstruck feeling about Jesus. We need to be learning about him, finding out where he was born in a manger. <laughs> Find about him in eternity past and begin to dwell on the love of God and get, let him be our hero. Said all these uh, sports people, and rock and God help the country music people. That's a whole nother layer of sin right there. <laughs> country music. I know y'all love it. But Jesus wants to be real to us. And we need to be building a relationship because everything. I got love letters. That woman wrote me every single day for how many years? She always signed it. And she put perfume on there. I can still smell it. Strong stuff. Big bottle of it. Like $4. <laughs> and she wrote, and I still got some of them. I used to read them on Valentine's Day. Remember that? Makeup stuff. You don't know what was real, what, what was it. But she was OCD with me. Obsessive, compulsive. <laughs> Still that way. We need to read the love letters. Don't let God be something that you've created an illusion in your mind as to who He is. He's just a uh, He's a government. 
a government agency that gives you what you need and helps you out and, and your buddies. He's not your buddy. He's your soul mate. He's your everlasting God, your father. And he loves you. And he's been watching you since you were knee high to a grasshopper. He's watching you. I heard a story of a man here in town. I'm not going to give his name. And he got on the bus, and, or missed the bus. Anyway, his parents thought he was at school. And he came home from school, uh, they thought, during the day, and he didn't know what to do, so he knocked on the door. How stupid is that? He, Jonathan, he knocked on the door of his own house. <laughs> Hello, I miss school today. God was watching. Every stupid thing you did, God was watching. All that stuff that came in your life that, that just disillusioned you. Remember the first funeral you went to? Remember that? I remember that. My grandma Grape, I called her. Great, great grandma, Grape. I thought, that's a nice name. It was a Luther church. It was snowing out in the middle of nowhere in the country. And the first time you see, where's how it's, oh, they died. What? What's that? And you find out people die. Then you get older and you put it out of your mind and you say, I'm going to live forever. No, you're not. So since you're not, you need to find out about the one you're going to spend eternity with. And he's writing you letters. And all of this is for you. And there's stuff in here. I start to say hidden messages. There's not. Just don't get conspiracy. Count every other word. Back up to, you know, there's some weird stuff out right there. But it, 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 it gets so personal. And the reason we don't live for God, it's not personal. He knows you. He knows what you've been through. He knew my dad stood on me when I was seven years old and whipped me with a belt. He didn't really hurt, but I like telling people about it. He couldn't get me to hold still. I was so wiry. He was only 220 pounds. God was watching. God was watching. With every calamity that you've been through, and we think sometimes we're the only one, with every injustice that you felt, with every problem that came your way, with every feeling of anger and anxiety, God was there. He didn't just suddenly come here. You just finally noticed him. He's been there the whole time. Getting you ready for faith. Nothing better than faith. I got something solid. Nothing can, can stop it. Nothing can shake it. Nothing's going to keep me out of heaven. That's all I need to know. Is anything going to keep me out of heaven? I want to know what that is. I want to take care of that. Nothing. So I can focus on living for God and getting to know who he is and falling in love with him. Who is he? This is who he is. This is who he is, and it's all we need to know to have faith in him, the God of the Bible. Get to know him. Let him help you. He makes you bigger than what you are because he is bigger than what you are.